Now, in fact, I need to say that. So, right triangle trig ratio. So the trick to doing this whole thing comes down to pick the angle first. Once you pick your angle, angle A, right? Then you name your size, but you got to go to your angle first. So if that's your angle that I want to use because I use angle A. Then and never, by the way, never use the 90. Never ever use the 90. Okay, never ever. It's always either one of these. So if I want to use A, then automatically that's my opposite side, right? It's directly opposite my angle. We know the sides of the hypotenuse because hypotenuse is always the longest side. It's always opposite the 90. And then this 36 right here is next to this angle A. So next to, we call it adjacent, right? Adjacent. Okay, then it gets easy. It really does. So all six ratios, we got that from what we did in our reading, kind of reading. We know that sine of A is equal to, well, what's it say? Opposite of hypotenuse. Why don't you guys try these? Cosine of A tangent of A. I want you to do cosecant of A, secant of A, and cotangent of A. Okay, just give that, give yourself a couple of minutes to get these ratios, okay? Take a couple of minutes to get these ratios. <laughs> Alright, hopefully you have 15 over 39. Thumbs up, 15 over 39, thumbs up. Okay, hopefully you have 36 over 39, right? If you don't get it, please ask. This is the most important day for right triangle trig. If you don't get this, then the rest you're going to be lost, right? Tangent of A should be 15 over 36, opposite over adjacent, right? Cosecant is just the opposite sign, right? Cosecant is just the opposite sign, so I'm write it as 39 over 15. Secant is just the opposite cosine, so it's just going to be 39 over 36. And cotangent it's just the opposite or the reciprocal of tangent 36, 15. Okay? So far, so good? Yes. Now, on our reading on the back side, we actually got these. We already know that the tangent of 45, we said, was 1, right? We did that. We already did that exercise, right? We saw that the sine of 45 was the square root of 2 over 2, right? We also saw that the cosine of 45 was the square root of 2 over 2 also, right? We just did those earlier. We did that like five minutes ago, right? So let's write those down, okay? And we just did these earlier too. We did the sine of 30, which I think was square root of 3 over 3, right? We did the cosine of 30, which I think was 1 half, right? No, I got these backwards, don't I? This one's square root of 3 over 3, and this one's 1 half, right? And then we found the tangent of 30 degrees. Let's see, it's going to be 1 over square root of 3 over 3. Uh, tangent is that. So that one's a square root of 3 over 3. I got these backwards. Who has the reading? I lost my reading. Uh, Can I borrow it? Yeah, it's the square root, cosine of square root of 3 over 2, and the tangent is square root of 3 over 2. Ah, see, I don't know where I saw this. Okay, so let's get these right. Sine of 30 turned out to be 1 half. Yep, cosine of 30 squared is 0, 2, um, or 2. Tangent of 30 turned out to be squared of 3 over 3, right? Thanks, Bailey. Um, sine of 60, we did these earlier, and sine of 60 was squared of 3 over 2. Thanks, Bailey. Cosine of 60 we saw was 1 half. We also saw the tangent of 60 turns out to be the square root of 3. Okay, good. All right, now, so what's the big deal about trig? So who cares? A bunch of ratios, right? So trig is the most used math. It is the most used math of all, right? Let me show you why. 
Okay, here it is. So we have a roof, for example, that happens to be this long and we need this length. That would be a real life problem, wouldn't it? So obviously this isn't a roof, but it's a triangle. So step one, pick an angle. Use it, we gotta start with an angle. Which angle should we start with? 38. Start with 38, okay, step one. Always start with your angle. Always, always, always. And I like to circle it because it's a visual thing for me, okay? Step two, let's use the given information. So that's my given information, that's my 12. That is the hypotenuse, isn't it, right? You guys agree? That's my hypotenuse, okay? Now step, the next step is to decide what I wanna solve for. Do I wanna find little i or little p? It doesn't really matter, but the names of the sides come from the angle. This is angle i, that's little i, right? If this is uh, angle p, then that's little p, okay? So um, let's, what do we wanna solve for? Little i or little p, it doesn't matter to me. What do you want to find? Little i or little p? Little i. Let's find little i, okay? You guys got it? So here's what I do. Go to the angle first. Go to the angle first, right? Then once I go to the angle, Chris McQuick, I'm recording, okay? Okay? Go to the angle, okay? Then after you pick your angle, right? Use the given information you have, right? And name it. That's a hypotenuse, right? And then figure out, do I want to find this side or this side? Well, Katie likes this side. That's my opposite side. So what I'm looking at is the opposite of the hypotenuse, right? So then I look up above, and which one of those uses opposite and hypotenuse, right? It's got to be the sine. You guys agree? Sine. So I'm going to write down my trig ratio. I'm going to go, okay, well, my board says sine of theta equals the opposite over hypotenuse, right? And I'm using that because these are the two sides I'm using, right? Right, opposite of hypotenuse. Okay, so let's do it. Theta means angle. I don't want theta. What's my angle? It's 38 degrees, right? Don't write theta, write the angle. So I'm write sine of 38 is equal to, let's see, opposite is little i over my hypotenuse is 12. Okay, so I'm just filling in the numbers in my ratio. So opposite hypotenuse is sine. Theta then really is an angle, 38 degrees. The opposite is little i and the hypotenuse is 12. How am I doing? So far so good? So if we're going to solve, this sine of 38 really is a, just a number. It's just a number in my calculator, right? Just boom, boom, boom. So let's multiply the 12 up. Okay, just solve for it. So I'm going to go 12 times the sine of 38 equals little i. And I'm just going to use my calculator to get it, right? So I'm going to go, okay, I can do that. I can go 12 times the sine of 38. There's my answer. About 7.4, right? About 7.4. That's the side. The Y is about 7.4, approximately. Okay? Not too bad. Now, I'm not going to finish up the rest. We'll talk about I'm going to do four with you next. But I'm going to talk about the rest of this real quick. Okay? Now, if it says solve the rest of it, real quickly, we could do this. We could find angle P, because how many degrees are in a triangle? 90 between these two, right? So you can get this one for some subtraction from 90, right? And you can get the other side by Pythagorean's theorem, right? You guys agree with that? So you can get this other one by Pythagorean's theorem, you get this angle from subtraction from 90, right? And I can do that real quickly. Angle P, let me go 90 minus 38, and that answer is about 52. So this angle is 52 degrees. And if I do Pythagorean's theorem with this, I'll just show you my calculator. I'm going to go. If I go um, 12 squared minus 7.4 squared, right, and square root that, about 9.44, okay? So it's about 9.44, okay? And that's just geometry, right? That's just stuff you learned in geometry, okay? Thumbs up? Does that seem pretty easy? Okay, let's take a look at the next example, okay? So let's do it again. Step one, pick an angle to work with. Always start with the angle. Have I said that enough time? Always start with the angle. Okay, so let's use our 44 degree or 54 degree. I can talk 55 degree angle, right? And then let's use what we have, our 42. So my 42 is my opposite, right? It's my opposite. Right? Bailey, you get to pick. Are we going to find little t, which is that side? Or are we going to find little a? It does not matter. Which one do you want? Little a. So you've chosen the adjacent side, haven't you? And it's good to know that because I'm going to use the ratio that uses opposite and adjacent, right? Which one of those three uses opposite and adjacent? 
it is tangent. So the form says, well, tangent of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. But I'm going to put the numbers in, right? Right, you guys agree? Because I don't really want a formula. I want the numbers. So theta means angle. So I'm going to put the 55 right there. So I'll go tangent 55 equals, let's see, the opposite, so here's my, here's my angle, the opposite is 42, right, over my adjacent, which is my little a, okay, now, so it's going to take two steps, I'm going to multiply it by a, and then I'll divide by tangent of 55, so if I solve, I'll multiply the a up here, so I'll have a times the tangent of 55 equals 42, right, and then I'm solving for a, so then, and remember, this is a number. That is a number. It looks like, like a word, but it really is just a number. So if I divide by tangent of 55, divide by tangent of 55, and I can do that. I'm just going to use, let my calculator do the work. Okay, okay, I can do that. Slide that out of the way. So I'm just going to go, all right, what is 42 divided by tangent of 55 I think about 29.4, okay, 29.4, okay, does that answer make sense? Well, yeah, I mean, if that's 42, that makes sense, doesn't it? That could be right. Okay, and then again, to solve the rest of it, I'll do that real quickly. Um, I know these two angles add up to 90, you guys agree with that? So I'm just going to go, what's 90 minus 55? I get 35, so this angle's got to be 35 degrees. And to find little t, I'm just going to use Pythagorean's theorem, I'm going to go, okay, I'll go 42 squared plus 29.4 squared, square root that, right? So I get about a 51.3. And I just use Pythagoras, okay? Are you guys ready to turn the page? Does this seem easy? Jacob, you with me? Yeah, and, okay, here we go. This is the most used, I call it math, not arithmetic, the most used math in our world is right triangle trig. You see right angles all over the place, don't you? Okay, a building is in construction, constructing a wheelchair ramp. The height is 18 inches, and to the angle of the ground must be about 4.8 degrees. What would the length of the ramp be? Draw a picture. You know it's got to be a right triangle, so draw a picture. Draw a picture, okay? The height is 18. That's the height of the ramp, right? And we know the angle's got to be 4.8 degrees because it's a wheelchair ramp. And this is the ramp. Let's call that X, okay? You with me? Here's my ramp. There's my angle, 4.8 degrees. Here's my height of the ramp. And there. So always start with the angle. Always, always, always start with the angle. So then if we start with the angle, what's the name from the angle? What's the name of the 18? It's the opposite, right? Directly opposite. What's the name of the x? It is the hypotenuse, right? Okay, so we look up there. Which one of the three ratios uses opposite and hypotenuse? It is. Sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Yeah, that's only if we're in church. We'll call it sin, right? Amen. Right? So, sine of 48... So it goes, not theta, but the angle, right? We'll go sine of 4.8 equals the opposite, which is 18, over the hypotenuse, which is x. Okay, now last time we multiplied up the x, we'll shortcut, okay? I'm going to flip the page real quick, okay? We'll flip the page because I want you to shortcut, right? Real cool shortcut. So when the variable's on the bottom, what we really did is we brought it up and divided. So we really just divided by that, right? So let's shortcut, okay? So in this case, we can do the same thing x is equal to 18 divided by sine of 4.8. We're just going to use our, our calculator, right? Okay, clear. 18 divided by, you can't see it, thanks Katie. 18 divided by sine of 4.8. We get an answer of about 215. That's a wheelchair ramp, right? And that's a pretty small angle. That actually makes sense in terms of inches. So it's about, well, it's about 215 inches. If I divide that by 12, you don't have to, but if you divide by 12, it's about, it's almost 17.9 feet long, okay? This is a long ramp, but it's a wheelchair ramp, right? 
my mom can't get upstairs anymore, so we got to wheel up the wheelchair ramp. Okay? Okay, last but not least, example six. Okay, a five-foot park ranger measures the angle of elevation at the top of Old Faithful to be about 34.6 degrees from, obviously I can't type, 200 feet away, okay? Find the height of the geyser. So draw a picture, okay? Here's my park ranger dude. He's got his cool hat on. Got to make, he's got one of those cool hats on because park ranger, right? Smokey the Bear type, right? Old Faithful is going, right, that right there, right? So he's going to measure the angle, right? And the angle is 36 degrees. 34.6 degrees, okay? And he's 200 feet away. Okay, now, there's one piece of information in here that we didn't put in, and that's his height, right? So when we solve this triangle, right? When we solve this triangle, we're going to have... So we'll have to add in his height, right? So we solve this whole thing. We got to add his height in. You guys, does that make sense? Because he's looking at it. He's above the ground, right? So when we get done, we better add five feet. We're done, okay? So let's do it. Here's my angle. Always start with your angle. If I said that enough times, always start with your angle, okay? Then figure out what your sides are called. This would be my opposite. This would be my adjacent. So we look up and say, okay, which one, which of those three uses those two words, opposite, adjacent, tangent. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, which you'll probably stop writing this pretty soon because you don't need to, right? You guys agree? So we're going to go tangent of 34.6 degrees equals x over 200, right? This time we can just mul multiply up the 200. Just multiply it up. Just bring the 200. Multiply the 200 right up there, right? So about 200 times the tangent of 34.6. We'll use our calculator to do that, right? Okay, we go tangent 200, tangent of 34.6, and we get an answer about oh about 138. Okay, about 138. About 138. But we got to add in, got to add in the five, right? Because the park ranger is five feet above that. So we add in five feet and we get 143 feet. Okay? There it is. Okay? Does that seem pretty easy? So today, make sure you draw the triangles, okay? Draw the triangles, do the work. Um, hopefully, um, give me a thumbs up, right triangle trig.